surprised to hear I'm speaking in a personal capacity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want the line. I think you just have to take yourself a couple of months back in unison to, for the first time for a long time, where I felt I could hand on heart say I was proud of my union. My union delivered posters, leaflets, badges, stickers, meetings, campaign organising committees, diverted its resources from a lot of the things that it does, some of which are very good and some of which are maybe not so good, to prioritising getting a yes vote in the ballot, which they won, uh, we won, 80%, and then for the biggest strike action that we have ever <coughs> taken part in. And I think there are unison members up and down the country, and Dave Prentice said it himself, that was the proudest day of our unison life on November the 30th, and that is something that will live with people for an awful long time. <coughs> And yet, despite that, despite all the effort and energy, and possibly because of all the activity that came out of it, within a few weeks, we saw our union actually beginning to negotiate on terms of the pension sort of um, attack, which accepted the bulk of the three main attacks that have been the slogans that have run through every union in this country. The pay more, the work longer, the get less was the premise on which those negotiations had taken place. Exactly how you would divide it, so, you know, for anybody under 26,000 sort of uh, uh, full-time equivalent in the health service, you won't be paying more this year, but for people over 26,000, we will be paying their contribution instead. And that has been presented as a significant improvement. So none of it was ever about changing the, uh, the, the basic fundamentals. It was always about how we made those attacks possible. And those are the, uh, the negotiations that have taken place. In the health service, those negotiations are almost complete. They say they are two weeks from completely having that signed, sealed uh, and delivered. And it still involves working longer, paying more and uh, getting less. In local government, there are much less down the road of the detail, but they have still accepted uh, those premises. They are being presented to us in unison by our negotiators as significant improvements. And I think that's something that, to be honest, even when they say that, right, they know they can't sell that to us. So there's nobody at any of the awful meetings in unison that I've been to over the last uh, 10 days that have said this is a great deal and we should accept it and it's fantastic and we've won. They've all accepted that it involves significant attacks on our members. And they use that horrendous phrase, this is the best that can be won through negotiations without us taking sustained and immediate strike action and selling your children to the devil and maybe giving up. And it goes on and on. And I think that they are... I think that is a very depressing and a very disappointing position to be in, having been on November the 30th only uh, six weeks ago. It does seem more than six weeks, I have to say. But I think, disappointing as that is, and disappointing as the meetings were that were held this Tuesday, where the local government uh, pension scheme did agree that they would now spend until the end of April <coughs> negotiating the details of that attack under the terms and the premises that have always been the terms and premises of pay more, get less with the same cost ceiling. In health, we actually won a slightly better offer, a better deal in unison, in that because we're nearer, we have agreed that we will ballot our members, which is not something I advocated. We felt we should reject it straight out of hand because it is not a significant improvement and therefore not worth. We lost that vote. But they didn't have the bottle in the health executive meeting to argue we should put a recommendation, this is the best we can get out of negotiations. Because I think they worried that even our Unison Health Executive, they would not win that position at this stage. There is one widespread anger amongst units and branches about the complete throwing away of the unity and the strength and the potential that we had. But there is also the writing on the wall about what will happen if we don't fight over pay. There's somehow some illusion being sown amongst some people that it is possible to say, well, OK, we did a bit about pensions. We can now sort of maybe wait a bit and see if there's a better fight that comes along and we'll be in a better position. Unfortunately, we can lay down our arms, but the Tories are not laying down theirs. They are laying into the welfare state, into the public sector, into working class people across 
across this country on a scale that we have not seen before. And actually, Unison was losing members before it decided to ballot people over the pension strike at a rate that we have never seen before, a huge rate of loss of members. When we decided to ballot members, the month of November last year, we recruited more people in Unison than we have ever recruited in any month in the 18 years' existence of Unison. Our strike was popular, not just amongst members, but amongst non-members. And I think the fight is not over. In health, we will meet again on the first week of November to decide whether to put a recommendation to reject the offer and to fight. And I think branch, health branches up and down this country and individual health members have to be bombarding me and the other members of the executive and the officers saying, we want the sort of campaign that you ran when you called for a vote yes for strike action, but this time we want you to vote no to the same crappy pension deal that was being offered to us before. We want the posters. We we want the leaflets, we want the meetings, we want you to launch the campaign that we actually now know you're capable of doing, and doing it against the government that hasn't changed one iota, it's only us that's changed. In local governments, they're calling for a special conference in order to overturn the decision that, um, that decided that we would put, uh, that we would have three months more of negotiations within the most crappy terms uh, possible. And they stand a real chance of winning. I don't think we should be sort of demoralised about the potential. I apologise for the fact that that is a delay and that we will be behind in terms of the decisions that other unions have to take. We are doing our best and we are conducting a fight. But I think the other fight that we have to conduct is to have that argument about what the government has planned for us, not just sort of in the future like six months or a year. The day after the Heads of Agreement was signed, the North West NHS employers wrote to us and said this year they will be attacking our national terms and conditions on annual leave, on sick pay, on increments, on bonus payments and on some other things that I can't even remember. There is a list of them. I don't think it's a coincidence. The day that they thought we were going to give up on pensions, they said, well, we're coming for everything else as well. Members are not stupid, workers are not stupid, branch secretaries are not stupid. They can see that writing on the wall. And we have to have an argument that November the 30th was fantastic. People who weren't confident about striking, who were incredibly frightened and nervous, who'd never done it before. Physios, radiographers, people who you would never expect to see on picket lines, went because everybody else was on picket lines on that day as well. We had the unity that made people feel confident, and we had the unity that meant that Britain half shut down on November the 30th. It was very difficult to do all sorts of other things. And I think that we have to go back to not just saying that we will have our fight within our union, but if other unions do vote to come out, then I think we have to ask ourselves as trade unionists, will I cross the picket line on the day? Will I become <laughs> that When I talk to people at work, they expect to be called out. That's what they expect. They expect if there's a strike that they will be in it. Telling them they've got to go to work will be a strange argument to have. And I think there will be people, lots and lots of people who are willing to cross that picket, those, not cross those picket lines and to come out on strike in solidarity with them. And that's something that we have to fight on the ground for as well. And I think we have a real chance of winning that. Because putting that unity, putting that strength, putting that confidence back in the bag is not an easy thing for them to have to do. We need to be organised, both to challenge what our national union um, executives and, uh, and officials are doing, but also on the ground to make sure that that solidarity is maintained.